Today I want to talk a little bit about adhesives. It is the one subject that I get asked about probably more than anything else. People will ask me, you know, which glues do I need? What do I use for this? What do I use for that? I'm going to show you the glues that I use and that I like, uh, glues and tapes. There are just so many out there. There are tons. If you know of others, you have things that you prefer, that you find work better, then by all means, you know, use those things. This is just kind of an FYI, you know, if you need some suggestions, um, that's what this is all about. And it is based on just my experience and personal opinion. I am by no means any kind of a <laughs> glue authority. <laughs> Um, I will say that glues are a little bit subjective. It's really a matter of opinion, and it is also a matter of where you live. Most glues are affected in some way by climate and by the way you store them. So um, there are glues that might work really better in one area of the country, not so much in another. So it, it, it is very much a matter of opinion, and I'm just going to give you my opinion today. So. Um, let's get started. Let's start with PVA, uh, which stands for polyvinyl acetate, and we, we usually think of that as white glue. This is things like Elmer's. Um, it usually has a high water content, uh, which means that it, it buckles paper pretty badly. You know, not, not really the ideal choice for paper-to-paper -paper applications. But it dries smooth, it dries clear, and it's permanent after it's dry. It is a good glue to have on hand for things like um, when you're doing the, the paper tube crafts, you know, making the bowls and different things. Really good for that. It's good for, uh, you can do uh, decoupage with it. Uh, paper mache with it. Um, a lot of book binders use PVA and you know what? More power to them. <laughs> I, it's not my choice for uh, book binding applications. Uh, Mod Podge is a PVA glue with additives in it such as uh, it has a varnish in it. You may have heard online that you can make your own Mod Podge by adding water to plain PVA glue. Okay, no, you can't. <laughs> Unless adding water sometime, somehow magically creates varnish, all you're going to get is watery PVA when you add water to Elmer's. So that's not Mod Podge. Mod Podge has a varnish in it, a, a sealer that PVA, regular PVA glue does not have but Mod Podge is PVA based. So is, this is called the Ultimate Glue from Crafter's Pick. I actually prefer this over Tacky Glue. You may notice I don't have one of those gold bottles of Tacky Glue. I, I prefer this one over it. They're very similar. This one is not quite as thick, but it, to me, it dries faster and I just prefer it. Um, I do use the quick dry tacky glue on occasion and this one is you probably can't even read it it's been run through the ringer it's Elmer's craft bond um, paper craft glue gel it's a clear gel it is a PVA but I I really like this I use this a lot when I make um, those paper tubes and paper beads you know how you have to put a little glue on them to to hold them together I really like this one. Uh, occasionally at the dollar stores or at the 99 cent store, I will pick up little random tubes of, of white glue like this. Sometimes they're brands I've never heard of, but those are really good just to have on hand for um, traveling or to keep in other rooms of the house because I like to have a little bit of glue in every room of my house because you never know, right? And I have a couple of these that actually, I don't know if this one is, yeah, it is. But some of them, the tips come off, so you can refill them. So, you know, there you go. You may also be surprised to learn that some glues are PVA-based, 
with solvents added to them, one in particular, Helmar 450. It is a PVA glue um, mixed with a solvent. I think it's acetone. And that, that's how they make this. So not all PVA is white. Sometimes it's clear, sometimes it's, it's really weird, but you know, PVA is a very broad general category and good to have on hand for just some uh, general crafting needs. Now I mentioned that PVA is often used in book binding, even though it's not my personal choice. What I prefer for that is to use a paste. Yes Paste is my favorite one to use, but I do sometimes use Nori Paste, N-O-R-I. And this I got at a Japanese dollar store. It was like three to a pack for, I don't know, three dollars. It was really cheap. But um, there are other brands of Nori. It's a little bit different from Yes. Yes tends to be really uh, thick. You can thin it with water to get it, you know, to the consistency that you want. And Nori starts out a little bit thinner than Yes. It's already kind of... Um, softer, not quite as sticky, so it's it's a it's a different creature, but it's they're both um, similar in that they dry slow, which makes them repositionable. If you are book binding and um, maybe you're covering your book board with a fabric or a paper and and you get it on there crooked, you have some time to peel it back up. And redo it. So that's the advantage of using a slow drying paste. Pastes are also water reversible, which means if you get them wet after they dry, they will loosen up. They'll start to, to break down and dissolve. So, you know, you don't want to use these in something that's going to be out in the weather. Um, you want to keep that in mind. But for books and things, it's perfect because, you know, most of us are not going to take our handmade books into the tub with us, I wouldn't think. I'm not going to judge you if you do, you know, but <laughs> for the most part, <laughs> pastes work just fine for that. Nori and Yes are both starch-based. I've never had a problem with Nori going bad. Um, of course, I don't buy it and use it as often as I do Yes, but I have had Yes turn on me. I had um, a couple of smaller containers that I didn't use for a while and they will start to get funky. They'll start to kind of turn dark and then they'll start to turn really scary, let's just say. <laughs> I don't know that it's mold. It may not necessarily be mold um, and it may just have to do with the climate that I live in, but keep in mind that it is possible for Yes Paste to uh, kind of go bad or turn on you, so don't buy a humongous thing unless you're pretty sure you're going to use it, um, you know, I'd say within a year. Next up are some solvent-based glues. These tend to be uh, very stinky or delightful, <laughs> depending on your opinion. <laughs> They have that solvent uh, sort of gasoline smell to them that um, some people really don't like. Others, like myself, um, actually enjoy that scent. Um, they are usually very toxic. Um, the fumes even can cause you to grow a third ear. So, you know, keep that in mind. Use them with caution. But they are... Um, typically tend to be really good strong glues. There's one missing from my little stack here because I'm out of it. And I'm out of it because it's the one I use most often. And that is Beacon 3-in-1. It's um, same brand as this, Beacon Glue. It is very similar to um, Helmar 450. I prefer it because it seems to be a little thicker and a little stronger. That's just my opinion, but, but they are both very similar. These glues, like I said, are solvent-based. Solvent meaning um, it could be xylene, it could be acetone, it could be toluene. 
you know, any of those enes, xylene, benzene, toluene, those are all carcinogens. They're, um, they're very dangerous. They should be used in a well-ventilated area, but they just make for some awesome, awesome glue. Uh, GS Hypo Cement, this is a xylene based. It comes in this little tube and it has a teeny tiny little needle point on it, which um, there's no way I can even show you. It's too small to show up. You'll just have to Google it and trust me. It is an excellent glue for jewelry um, because of the teeny tiny needle point. You can really get down into some little tiny spaces with it and it holds tight. It's, it's not a super glue. It's more, it's similar to E6000. I find it to be, only it's thinner. It's not quite as thick. Um, you know, good old E6000. It, you might be surprised to know that the base of this one is called tetrachloroethylene. And if you've ever had anything to do with the dry cleaning business, you might have heard the word perchloroethylene or they call it PERC for short. I only know this because my mother used to own a dry cleaners. And PERC, PERC chloroethylene, is, is dry cleaning fluid. That's what they use to dry clean your clothes. They don't, yeah, your clothes do actually get wet during dry cleaning. I don't know why they call it dry cleaning. I guess because your clothes don't get wet with water. It's a chemical instead. But they are soaked in PERC, actually. And that is the base of E6000, is dry cleaning fluid. Um, it is good for holding, you know, chunky stuff, big chunky uh, beads and jewels and, and things like that. I, you know, that's my usually my go-to for chunky stuff. Rubber cement is a good old standby. This is usually a um, toluene base. It's one of those enes with some kind of a rubber, like latex. I mean, there's actually rubber in rubber cement. And it's, I use it actually fairly often when making books because it's good, um, it's easy to use, it's, you know, it's got the little brush, and if you brush, if you have two surfaces you're gluing together, brush them both with rubber cement, let them both dry, then stick them together, you know, they're, they're stuck for eternity. So I like to have rubber cement on hand. Fabri-Tac is also very similar to Beacon 3-in-1 and Helmar, but it is thicker, much thicker. Like Helmar, it has an acetone base, so they smell a little bit like nail polish remover. And um, Fabri-Tac is extremely tacky and sticky. It's, it's for fabric. Um, there are times when I don't just regular PVA is fine for fabric, but if I need something, if I'm holding really chunky pieces of fabric together, I need something super sticky, I use Fabri-Tac. To be honest, I use it more for paper than I do for fabric. It is just a good sticky glue. I often refer to it as sinus infection glue because it is about the consistency of a thick, stringy sinus infection. <laughs> so. I'll just um, leave you with that visual as we go on to the next one. This next group is some miscellaneous glues or those that I really don't know a lot about. They have a variety of ingredients and purposes. Good old hot glue. I usually have to, I have a whole bunch of these little mini glue guns. They're cheap. And then a bunch of these different colored glue sticks, you know, the glitter ones and all that, that I just use on occasion for fun stuff. But for, you know, serious hot gluing, I just use a regular hot glue gun. This is one of those um, Aline's Ultimate Glue Gun, which I bought for one reason only. It has the fine tip on it. Um, I absolutely have to have the fine tip on my glue gun. It comes with all these others that you can switch, at, switch out. Yeah, I'll never use those. <laughs> This is all I wanted. And this so far has proven to be a good glue gun. My only complaint with it, it's a little slow to heat up. Uh, but once it gets going, it, it's great. I have no, no complaints. I like that glue gun. There are a couple of different really sticky tacky glues that I like. These two. This is Scotch Quick Drying Tacky Glue. 
it's um, really super sticky and it does dry fast. This is a really good paper glue. And Tombow's Mono Multi Liquid Glue. They're both kind of a thin bodied uh, white glue, but extremely sticky. They're not, they don't have a high water content like PVA does. They may be PVA based, I have no idea. I couldn't find a whole lot of information on either of these. But here's, here's what I know. This one, Tombow Mono Multi Liquid Glue, dries sticky. So if you, you lay it down, when it's completely dry, it's sticky. And then if you glue something on it, you can later peel that off. It's like a temporary adhesive. But since it does dry sticky, it's also good for things like foiling and flocking and, 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 and uh, what are those, those macro beads and, you know, things like that. If I had to choose my one favorite all-purpose go-to glue, it's this one. And it is because it is so dang sticky. It dries super fast. Um, it dries clear. It's easy to use. It has the, you know, the wide tip and the thin point. And I will tell you, they clog easily. I don't care what Tombow's little ads tell you. <laughs> These suckers clog. <laughs> So, you know, I have to be real careful with them. And I sometimes get really frustrated when they get clogged. So I keep several <laughs> on hand. So that when this one makes me angry, I can just go grab another one and then I can unclog that one later. But it, if I had to say, if I had to pick a favorite glue, this, this would be it just for general all-purpose paper-to-paper gluing. I keep a few different kinds of glue sticks on hand. And I don't know why, because I don't use them. I almost never use them, but I have them. I just feel like I should have them. I, I, I don't know. I um, have never had good luck with glue sticks. I know a lot of people swear by those yellow Uhu glue sticks, you know what I'm talking about? There are some artists that that's all they'll use. And I think they live in humid climates, because I think that it works better in humidity, which should work great down here, but you know, I think I've got enough glue. I don't, don't really need to expand my um, <clears throat> glue inventory. So I don't use a lot of glue sticks, but I do have them on hand, and they do work for some people for some things. So there you go. This is another Beacon product. It's called Fast Finish Decoupage. This stuff is like magic. I don't know what's in it. I don't know how it works, <clears throat> but it works. It is awesome for especially gluing really fine papers. I don't know if you can tell, but it's the consistency of water. It doesn't have a solvent odor. It, when it dries on your hands, you can't even feel it. It does not leave your hands sticky, but it will stick papers together. I'm telling you, magic. I don't know how it works. Um, it's not good for general collage, decoupage purposes, in my opinion, I find that it works really best with thinner papers, thick papers. Um, you really have to soak them good to get it to work. It, it will do, but I just find that I really like it for tissue papers, mulberry papers, things like that. It's just a fascinating glue. Um, spray glue. There is usually very few things that are stickier and better for not buckling paper. You know, spray glue is, is nothing is better than spray glue. I don't use it as often as I'd like to because I don't spray it in my house. Um, you know, you're just asking for trouble. <laughs> that overspray, I'm telling you, overspray can just go 100 feet in every direction and you won't even know. And I don't want that in my house. So I do have to use it outside, which means effort. And I'm morally opposed to that. So I, I don't use spray glue as often as I'd like to. But it... It works really good when I do use it. This is some stop fraying stuff, Aline's stop fraying that I got over in the, probably at a fabric store, or <clears throat> at the craft store where the glues are, but I bought it, I bought it for some fabric I was working with that frayed, and evidently they were having a sale because I've got two or three bottles of this. <laughs> okay, I don't use fabric that often. And I don't have a fraying problem that often. I don't know why I have two or three bottles of this. But I did find that it, it works fairly well as a paper glue. Who knew? 
It's very similar. It's a little thinner than this one, but they're very similar. They're both kind of really sticky, tacky glues, um, but it dries fast. It, it's just a good paper glue. So if you happen to have a bottle of this that's been sitting around because, you know, you don't ever use it, you can use it on paper. Super glue, um, I pretty much never use on paper, but I do use for some um, uh, heavy embellishments and, and, you know, repairs and things like that. It does have its place. I almost never use super glue without an accelerator. <clears throat> I buy cheap super glue. This is from Hobby Lobby. They have it in different, they have like a thick, a thin, a medium, a super thick, you know, a variety of different glues. They're inexpensive. So I, I keep a couple of those on hand. And I used to buy a lot of this accelerator. And this was from Hobby Lobby too. It's called Extreme Power Accelerator for use with APS adhesive products. I don't know what that means. It's four dollars. <throat> it is basically some kind of alcohol, I think. It's not rubbing alcohol because I've tried to substitute rubbing alcohol. That really doesn't work. The problem with this, it's not that expensive. It's four dollars. It evaporates like nobody's business. You buy it, the bottle's full, you use it twice, two months later you go to use it again and it's gone. It has just disappeared. <laughs> so whatever its ingredients are, it, uh, it evaporates quickly. There is a way that you can DIY an accelerator. Um, this is a little trick that I will show you in a minute. If you really need your super glue to dry instantly, you can do it with something that you have on hand in your house, most likely. So I'll show you that little trick. But you know, super glue doesn't dry instantly. It does dry fast. But um, you do have to wait a few minutes. And sometimes I just don't have that, that 30 seconds to waste waiting for super glue to dry. So I like to use it with an accelerator to speed things up because you know, I got things to do. Uh, let's see, one thing that is missing from this group, because I'm out of it, is a silicone glue. You can get these at the craft store. They're usually in a tube, you know, hanging on a, on a wall in a package. Um, they will look similar to E6000, but it will say silicone on it. Or you can do the smart thing and go to the hardware store and just buy silicone caulk because it's the same thing. <laughs> and you get a whole lot more and you get it a whole lot cheaper. And you can get it in the big tube that you use with your caulking gun or they have it in smaller squeezy tubes that you can just put the, the cap back on when you're done and, you know, it, it will dry up and then you have to, you know, it, it does what it does, but it is usually a lot cheaper than buying the glue at the craft store. So silicone caulk from the hardware store is an excellent glue for um, some things that you would use E6000 on. The caulking tends to dry slower than E6000. It's not as stinky, although it does have an odor. Um, but you can also do some really cool textural things with the caulk that you can't with E6000 because it's, it's just a glue. It's sticky. It's made to attach things together. Caulk is made to, you know, you've got some time to work with it, to run a bead, to smooth it out. You can make some really cool textural doodahs with it. I covered a, a cone with white caulk last year and made a little Christmas tree out of it. And it looked like snow. And it was just cool and fun. So... Silicone caulk is another um, useful glue. I think that is it for the glues. Uh, let's move on to tape. These are most of the tapes that I use most often. For mounting things dimensionally, obviously, you know, you, I use these little mounting dots, or you can get it in a roll like that so that stuff sticks up off of your background. Those are good. Uh, occasionally I use these little adhesive squares that come in a little thing like this and they come off in little squares. 
these, I really love these. They're double stick, they're really sticky, they're good for putting pictures on a page or something, but they tend to be a little pricey, but they are easy to use. Good old masking tape uh, is good to have on hand. You can use this in the uh, seams of your art journals to keep the paint from seeping through the, the binding. I tend to use artist tape for that. It is a masking tape. It's just a little bit stronger than regular masking tape. Uh, it's sturdier and it's white as opposed to the kind of manila color and I, I just prefer it. Uh, some people use gaff tape or gaffers tape which is a product that you can get some art supply stores carry it now but you used to could only get it at um, audiovisual type stores that's used um, in that industry and I, overseas I've heard rumors that it's a lot cheaper than it is here in the US real gaff tape now there is gaff tape that is called gaff tape but it's not it's just kind of a fabric a cheap fabric tape that I suppose will work about the same uh, and it's a lot cheaper but true gaff tape here in the US is crazy expensive it's a heavy-duty fabric tape that you can use uh, similar to masking tape or to duct tape it does not leave a residue when you peel it up that's the beauty of gaff tape super sticky like duct tape but it peels off clean I do occasionally use just some regular double stick tape on a spool. Uh, this is another double stick tape. This one has a release paper and it is removable so you can reposition things. You know that has its purpose now and then. These are some double stick tapes uh, with release papers, all of them. This one is the kind that you can tear which makes it much easier to use. This one you can't tear, you have to cut it, but it seems to hold stronger than this one to me anyway. This is carpet tape, which is like the queen mother of all double stick tapes. When you need something stuck down and stuck down good, use carpet tape. It is excellent. It's, it's thin, but um, it holds like crazy. I always have carpet tape on hand. Occasionally I use a heat and bond tape. This is the kind that you iron on and I have some of that on hand for mostly for attaching fabrics together because I avoid sewing at all costs. And glue dots I use on occasion. These are those little things that are like, um, these are the thin ones so they're, do I have any on here? Oh there they are. Oh they're the little bitty ones too. They come in different sizes. Um, this is uh, mini, so they're tea tiny. But some of the big ones, they're just like like little sticky snot balls, you know. And they're really they're good for attaching dimensional things. I find that they they don't hold as strong as something like E6000, but they have their place. And I have an ATG gun that I use. <coughs> probably grab this most often just because it's easy to use and convenient to just run a line of double stick tape and stick two things together. Depending on the model you have, there are different um, widths of tapes. This one has adapters that you can get to use different widths of tapes and some of them you can only use one width. Um, they're a little pricey. The refills are a little pricey, but for ease and convenience, you know, it's a trade-off. There you go. Okay, I think that is everything that I know about adhesives. Those are the ones that I use most frequently. So now, let me show you that trick I was talking about with the super glue. I'll have to change camera angles so that you can see, but um, it's, it might come in handy at some point. I'm going to use this thick bodied super glue. And you're also going to need some baking soda. I keep mine in a jar because it's humid here. This is a piece of scrap cardstock. I'm going to put some of the super glue on the scrap cardstock.
spread it kind of thin. And I'm just going to take it a little bit to dry. Because, you know, like we said, super glue doesn't dry instantly. It does dry fast. If you want it to dry instantly, just get it on your fingers <laughs> for some reason. It seems to dry instantly on flesh. <laughs> but to speed it up, you can take some of this um, baking soda, sprinkle it on. Now this is for super glue applications where the glued area is not going to show. If the glue is going to show, you don't want to do this. Um, you can, but you'll need to file it down afterwards, smooth it down. But put on the baking soda, wipe it off. The glue is completely dry. Over here, it's still wet. Can you see? And I got it on my finger, not good. So, baking soda. It will instantly dry to your fingers too, and it makes a heat reaction, so don't, don't, <laughs> make sure you don't do that. <laughs> Put the baking soda on super glue. For whatever reason, acts as an accelerator and makes it dry instantly. Oh, pretty much. It had some wet under there still. There we go. Dry. So, there is your tip for the day. As you can see, it leaves a white residue, which you will have to kind of file down if you don't want it to show on your project. So, there's your mad scientist tip for the day. And that's pretty much everything I know about glues and the ones that I like to use. You may have differing opinions, but um, which is perfectly fine. Um, so if you, you need a little glue guidance, there you go. So, that's all. Awkward. The end.